As some of you know, I'm a bit of a nut for time lapses and hyperlapses. A few months ago, I adopted On One Photo Raw as my new tool for organizing videos and photos and for post processing raw images. In this video, I will analyze the time lapse functionality in On One Photo Raw to show how it has replaced the tool I was previously using for this task. Lightroom and After Effects. I will show how to use it with different kinds of time lapses and hyperlapse. I normally like to dive immediately into the thick of the action, but this time a few words about On One Photo Raw. I have tested several alternatives to Lightroom and Photoshop to respond to requests by members of my community who would prefer to have a program that can be purchased with a one-off payment instead of a monthly subscription. I was so pleasantly surprised by On One Photo Raw that I decided to adopt it myself after many years with Lightroom and Photoshop. I also became an affiliate and I can offer a discount coupon that you will find in the description below together with all the info about pricing and specs. This program covers all my personal needs. It can organize video and photos, can do practically everything, has an excellent interface and a very fast workflow, all in a non-destructive way within the same program. It is also very affordable and can be purchased either with a one-off payment or by monthly subscription. I've done an overview video about On One Photo Raw. I will post a link at the end of this one. But is this program faultless? Of course not. There are two small downsides that are negligible for most users, but can be important for others. The final quality of the file produced is not at the same level or some very specialized program aimed at professional photographer. Although the latest version 2022 produced very nice results, as you will see in the example that follow. Also, it is not the fastest of the lot. I find the latest version just a bit slower than Lightroom, but if we consider that we can use layers, mask, retouching tools, clone stamp, add text without a trip to Photoshop and still in raw format, my workflow is actually in most cases faster. Therefore, professional photographers that are looking for the best possible quality, mostly for large prints, may want to look elsewhere. But for 98% of users, On One is, in my opinion, the best solution, especially for someone who does both photography and video, as there is the possibility to organize and catalog video files, which is, in my opinion, crucial. I always shoot my time lapses in RAW format, and you will soon see why. In most cases, I take 300 photos that yield about 12 seconds of footage at the frame rate of 24 frames per second. The frequency of shots varies according to the kind of movement in the scene, generally from one shot every two seconds up to one every six seconds. It is much handier to organize each time lapse into an individual folder. If you want to know more about the way I shoot time lapses and hyperlapses, you can watch this video or the one about motion blur, the most important factor to master. You will find a link to these videos in the description below. In On One, we can navigate to a subfolder and visualize one of the photos forming the time lapse. I like to perform most of the static adjustments on the RAW files in uh, on one photo RAW, while I will do the dynamic adjustment on my video editor if needed. In most cases, images containing the sky benefit from some dehazing. In Lightroom with time lapses, a lot of care is needed with the dehaze slider, as it can introduce some horrible color shift. I find that with ON1 we can go much farther with this tool without creating any artifacts. You can see how the sky and the reflection on the water come alive. There is a very nasty dust spot on the top right of the image. In a single photo, it is extremely easy to get rid of it with a perfect eraser tool. But in time lapses, we should never do that, as it will cause horrible artifacts in the following frames. Just leave it as it is and we can easily fix it on the video editor. 
There are many ways to increase contrast. We can start by lowering the black point and the shadows a bit. Then, if needed, increase the white point and the highlights. I really like the mid-tone slider to adjust the central part of the histogram. This slider is not available in Lightroom. We can then add a tiny bit of contrast and readjust the midpoint accordingly. I would like to add a bit of light to the big yellow hotel and this reflection on the lake to draw the eyes to that point. I can use a radial filter in the local adjustments. In the white palettes I add just a touch of warmth and then a bit of vibrance. I adjust the overall luminosity and we are done with the static adjustments. We can now go back to the grid view by typing G, select all the photos of the time lapse to apply the same edits, and then click on Sync. We can now click on the icon Time. We are presented with these windows where we have several options. In RAW input, I prefer to use Full RAW. For size, 4K 3840. In codec, we have a choice between H.264 and ProRes. I am fine with H.264. Then I choose high quality and 24 frames per second. Using the slider speed, we can accelerate the time lapses. I will show you how to use it at the end of this video. There are two more choices. Detect camera movement should help reduce camera shake when the tripod is not very solid or in strong winds, which is not the case here. I will show how reduce flicker works later on. To the left we have a slider under the name Frame to visualize a preview of the time lapse. This time lapse was shot with an Icon D850 DSLR camera, which produces very big files of over 45 megapixels. So to generate the full time lapse it will take about 30 minutes, but it's not a big issue as the work is done in the background, so we are able to do other things in the meantime. And this is the result. Let's go back to ON1 and add a couple of effects to show the difference when exporting in JPEG files. Let's add first some dynamic contrast. We can adjust the level with the three sliders. I don't want to add contrast to the sky and the clouds, so I use the mask on this effect and paint it out of that area. Then we can add a sun flare effect. Let's go for a subtle sun star. We can play around with several parameters, including also the amount of sunshine on the other part of the scene. I am of course exaggerating the amount of the effect to make it more evident. If I now create the time lapse using as input the full row, this is the result. If I choose the embedded JPEG, the JPEG file automatically generated will be used. The process will be much faster, around 4 minutes. And this is the result. As you can see, the time lapse doesn't contain any of the adjustment and effect we added on the raw files. It is also very flat and dull. Even if we try to jets it up on Premiere Pro by adding some contrast and saturation, we cannot get anywhere near the control we have when using raw files, especially for the white balance, as info contained in the JPEG file are very limited. Let's move to this drone hyperlapse made at night with the Mavic Air 2S and developed with Lightroom and Premiere Pro. As you can see there is some flicker coming from the LED of the drone, some very fast flashes of white light in the lower part of the scene. Also there is some visible amount of noise in the sky. On one photo has a sensational denoising tool based on artificial intelligence. Let's put it into action. As you can see, the noise has completely disappeared, so no need to tweak the sliders. 
This time, when launching the time lapse, let's make sure that the option Reduce Flicker is checked. This is the result, and as you can see, the noise and the flicker are now a thing of the past. Excellent job! In this time lapse shot in the Italian Dolomites, there are no moving elements on the ground. The only motion is in the clouds coming towards the camera. It is an ideal situation to try to modify the speed of the time lapse, as the motion blur is not critical. In the time lapse window, there is a slider for speed. If we move it to the left, we double the speed. Let's have a go. Obviously, if we move the same slider towards the right, we get the opposite effect, a slower time lapse. Click on this link to watch my overview video about On One Photo Row. So, has any of you tried this program? Let me know your impressions in the comment below. And don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoy this video.